TV, it's time now for Chain Breakers. Now, when thinking about news and the dissemination of information around the crypto sphere, it's still hard to break away from those key influences, big crypto egos that still dominate the overarching narrative and drive the news agenda. And I'm joined now by a couple of men who are working to take on some of those narratives. I'm joined by Herbert Sim, the Bitcoinman.com, and Kishore M, CEO of Future One Exchange. Gentlemen, thanks so much for being with us. Thank you for, Thank you for having, having us. us here. All right, so Herbert, I want to start with you today. Firstly, just for our audience back at home, tell us a little bit about yourself, your past, what brought you to becoming the Bitcoin man. Mm, uh, really happy to be here today. Um, so a quick introduction about myself. I'm Herbert Sim, the Bitcoin man. So I am the founder of Crypto Chain University, the world first repository for uh, compiling blockchain and cryptocurrency research papers. So that was founded in 2010. Subsequently, I founded The Bitcoin Man uh, to propagate uh, cryptocurrency and blockchain. Um, so that was founded in 2016. Subsequently, I was headhunted to become a global operations director at Huobi Global. So uh, it was over there that I actually helped the company uh, come out from China into Singapore itself. Uh, that was during December 2017 where Bitcoin was banned in China. Mm -hmm. So uh, there was a lot of um, massive changes that could actually derail any uh, cryptocurrency kind of companies. And um, I was uh, du during at the point of time um, with a group of uh, my team members, we actually brought uh, the whole entire company out from China into Singapore. And that was quite a stressful period for all of us. And subsequently, the whole of last year, we saw the crypto winter as well. Mm -hmm. And that was when I actually uh, came out of the cryptocurrency exchange market and started advising different projects across the world. So Future One Exchange, uh, Kisho M, the CEO who is here mm -hmm. with us today, I'm advisor as well as investor to the exchange. Yeah. All right, wonderful. And a perfect seg segue to introduce you now, Kisho, and tell us a little bit about yourself and about Future One Exchange. Yeah, uh, happy to be here as, as well. Um, my background is I was working in Silicon Valley. Uh, that's how I started my career. Uh, moved from Silicon Valley to Singapore to start up my own hedge fund. Um, got bitten by the Bitcoin bug. Uh, started my own uh, crypto exchange, got a license, a regulator of Estonia. And we decided to uh, focus on a niche which, uh, or a pain point which uh, currently is not being solved. Mm -hmm. And the problem is uh, people are stuck with their cryptos. Mm -hmm. So we decided to come up with an auction marketplace where people can actually sell them. And uh, I think that's where we are focusing on. Okay, so then you both have stressed the importance of, of the Singaporean market and working there uh, within the Asian market as a whole. Now I myself just, have just returned from Block Show Asia mm -hmm. uh, 2019 there in Singapore. Uh, clearly a lot of uh, development going on in that space over there. What's the sort of, uh, and I'll open this question up to the both of you, what's the sort of uh, strengths that you see potentially coming out of the East Asian market as a whole when it comes to the development of the Bitcoin and cryptocurrency industries as a whole? Mm -hmm. um, I definitely see that uh, Singapore per se is uh, very much uh, in favor of uh, fintech, um, blockchain, and now they are also looking at uh, regulating uh, cryptocurrency, which means companies who would like to like to come and set up their uh, base in Singapore would be able to do that. So it's a much more crypto friendly, uh, I would say, uh, country for those who are looking to set up operations out of Singapore. Mm -hmm. you mm. it? Okay, so um, I've actually brought Huopi out of China into Singapore. Right. And during that phase of time, I was uh, really honored and lucky to actually be able to speak uh, with both the Deputy Prime Minister at the point of time and the uh, Taman. And then there was also Heng Sui Kiet, who is the Finance Minister of Singapore. And, um, and also during that time, I followed really closely alongside with the regulators, MES. And you could actually see that Singapore is very progressive and innovative and it's, uh, it doesn't stifle the innovation, even though, uh, so the regulators are watching very carefully, but yet careful not to stifle the innovation of the country. And I think this is really um, commendable because uh, this is in comparison to across the world, all the other regulators that when they do not know what's happening, they just simply ban it, they block right. it. Yeah, so Singapore, I would say, is definitely in the forefront being the one of the leading financial hubs of the world. 
Uh, of course, there are many other cities in the world that claim to be the blockchain island right. or blockchain city. So now the thing is, uh, it's all about the regulations. It's all about how conducive it is for the uh, startups and organizations to actually thrive within the financial hub itself. So Singapore, I would say, is definitely one of the top in the world. So then I want to uh, talk uh, and sort of develop that idea. Now, you founded and established the Crypto Chain University, mm -hmm. uh, that idea being the, the oldest repository for that compilation of blockchain and cryptocurrency knowledge. Mm -hmm. You talk about informing regulators and getting them to not just take a blanket, you know, take the stamp out and reject the whole idea as, at its core. Mm -hmm. uh, what impact do you find that disseminating of information mm -hmm. has on, you know, on regulators? Are you finding a positive impact? Are people responsive and actually listening to the sort of messages you Wow, okay, that's a really good question there. In fact, um, okay, when I found, first found it in 2010, um, the thing is there was barely any information online. Uh, I was digging through the dark web along, uh, so I had another teammate, both of us, we actually scoured the whole entire internet for white papers, research papers, uh, and we are even digging back into the past about cryptography. Uh, and cypherpunks, mm -hmm. uh, there's a whole group of um, computer scientists themselves who call themselves the cypherpunks. So we were actually digging through all their archives to put all this information together on the web itself, on our website. So uh, it was during that period of time that we started shilling cryptocurrency mm -hmm. um, and we actually came in at a period where it was about $20. So and then within the year itself, we saw the peak at $80. So um, I think that actually um, gave us the motivation to actually uh, start compiling more and more because I think uh, for the industry to grow, it first start with the academics who will then propagate the education of this subject to more people and from there more people start entering the market. So I guess um, Crypto Chain University was designed with the vision of simply putting that information there for accessible to the world. So we are making it decentralized, making it free for all to access. That is how education should be. Mm -hmm. yeah. Mm. And, and now, Kishore, I want to bring you back into the conversation and talk sure. about, you know, uh, talking about education, talking about working with regulators, it's critical, but, you know, uh, w establishing an exchange such as Future One Exchange, you're where the rubber meets the road, you're actually, you know, working with regulation as it's planned out yeah. and as, it's, uh, in it, as it exists in its current form. Establishing your exchange and working with regulators in the current market, uh, do you find it difficult uh, given the sort of haziness that exists in a lot of jurisdictions around uh, cryptocurrency policy and different jurisdictions, different attitudes? And sort of how do you deal with that uh, complexity? Uh, so what we have done is we have uh, looked at it and seen that uh, uh, the path of least resistance. Mm -hmm. So let's, let's, let's uh, look at, uh, for example, a P2P, which is a peer-to-peer -peer exchange model, which we have uh, uh, adapted. Um, you have a bank account, I have a bank account, we are both already KYC'd. Right. So if I transfer money from my bank account to your account, there's going to be no problems. Uh, so we decided why don't we just have an escrow based uh, smart contract uh, solution which makes it trustless. So we developed a platform and we got our uh, license from Estonia, so mm -hmm. we're already regulated by Estonia. And then we uh, made sure that we have the right kind of people who understands the business. So uh, for example, Hubbard is our advisor and mm -hmm. he, he has a lot of experience. Uh, and he brings that to the to the platform. Uh, we have Iman Police, who's the founder of Malta Blockchain Summit. Uh, we have uh, Trescon CEO uh, as well, who's our uh, uh, so-called advisor. Mm -hmm. So we made sure that we have the right kind of people on on the board, and uh, we have the license. Plus, we made sure that uh, people who already are KYC, we don't have to worry about it. But we went one step further. And what we did is we ensure that even the blockchain addresses are monitored. So for example, if Bitcoin comes into our, our exchange, we know the source of it. That way we are not uh, dealing with uh, um, the dark web. Okay. And uh, now, gentlemen, uh, as we head to the end of 2019, everyone's looking forward to uh, 2020 to see what's coming through. I want to get uh, the sage wisdom from the both of you. 2020, what do we see as the big trends uh, that you're looking out for and you're mm. hoping to uh, perhaps influence and change and develop going into 2020? Herbert, I'll start mm. with you. Wow, okay. I guess uh, I've been getting this question all over the, uh, the world in the interviews. Uh, okay, straight coming from me. I've seen the from historical data 2010 up to today. So um, we have always been waiting for uh, countries across the world 
to finally launch their own national cryptocurrency. Mm -hmm. And it's about to come to fruition. Right. Yeah, we have the likes of Fang, Facebook, uh, like Amazon and more. And Facebook finally, finally launched Libra, mm -hmm. right? And that was so exciting for us. However, uh, it went um, kind of piecemeal. Right. Uh, there wasn't much uh, you know, buzz about it eventually. Like it didn't affect the price at all. Simply because China took lead, we have the likes of PayPal, Visa, Mastercard leaving Libra just mm -hmm. to enter China market, right. right? And so I guess the next wave that we are looking out for is actually China launching their own cryptocurrency, and that would actually penetrate and make a really big impact across the world in blockchain and crypto. And so that is just the first wave, which I foresee coming in the next three to six months. Mm -hmm. And we also have the likes of Bitcoin halving, which is going to happen sometime May, yeah? And uh, so what I can say is definitely before June 2020, we're going to look at a whole full-fledged bull run. Uh, so it can any, anywhere be anywhere from 20 to 50,000 easily. Yeah. Wow, that's uh, an exciting prediction right there. And uh, mm -hmm. Kishore as well, uh, any big trends you're looking out for in 2020? Uh, I think we're moving towards stable coins. We're moving towards uh, derivatives mm -hmm. uh, trading in the crypto space, uh, crypto lending, peer-to-peer um, um, -peer for sure. Mm -hmm. So, and of course, uh, uh, we're definitely looking at a very bullish market into, in 2020, like what Herbert shared. All right, it certainly sounds like it could be an exciting year one for us all to watch. Herbert, Kishore, I want to thank you so much for joining us here on mm -hmm. Block TV to break down some of the important work you guys are doing and what's going to happen in the year ahead. In the meantime, stay with us at blocktv.com for all the latest in news and information. I'm Asher Westrop-Evans. Thanks for watching.